Hi everybody, thank you for joining me for today's video. My name is David and this channel is Demars Coaching. This is the ninth video I'm doing in an installment of nine videos. I'm making a video for every diagnostic trait for borderline personality disorder, which is known now as emotionally unstable personality disorder. Like I said, I'm, I'm, this is the ninth one. It'll be in a playlist for you guys. I highly recommend if you're watching this one, if you want to know more about this disorder or these traits, to watch all nine videos and to start at the first one. It tends to make more sense that way. So first I want to establish that a disorder are problems causing negative effects in your life. We're all going to have problems. We have problems. We're going to have more, maybe. But it's when these problems are causing negative effects in your life, it may be a disorder. And a personality disorder is a pervasive pattern of these traits, a pervasive pattern in their life. They may not be aware of it. They may be very rigid and not change these things about themselves. Okay. So today in the United States, we use this book here, the DSM-5. And it stands for the American Psychiatric Association of Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fifth edition. This is what it looks like. Um, like it, I'll say it again. Borderline personality disorder is now called emotionally unstable personality disorder, but I'm going to keep referring to it as borderline. Um, this disorder has a very distinct criteria. You need five of the traits out of nine. You don't need all nine. And if you have only one, two, three, or four, you don't have the disorder. But we don't self-diagnose and we don't diagnose other people. Okay? This is a very serious mental illness. It's a mental health condition characterized by pervasive patterns of instability in mood, self-image, relationships. Makes someone very unstable, become very impulsive. Um, they have a reduced life expectancy of some 20 years, attributed largely to physical health maladies and notably cardiovascular. This is about stress. This disorder is about massive childhood stress. This actual uh, uh, trait is a reaction to extreme stress. Stress is the leading cause of death. People with this disorder have a 40% chance of also having narcissistic personality disorder. <clears throat> so this is number nine. What it says is transient, stress-related, paranoid ideation, or severe dissociative symptoms. Um, these are also symptoms that can occur with post-traumatic stress disorder and psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia, delusional disorders, and other personality disorders such as paranoid personality disorder. Transient stress-related refers to the times or only during the times of extreme stress. According to Dr. Howard E. Levine, chief medical editor of Harvard Health Publishing, says that psychiatric paranoid, paranoia includes paranoid personality disorder, paranoid schizophrenia, and delusional paranoid disorder. Identifying mark of a paranoid personality is fear and expectations of attack and betrayal, suspicion, being suspicious, uh, touchy, quick to be offended, slow to forgive, self-righteousness, argumentative. I know many, many people with the disorder that, that sounds just like that. They may have casual connections everywhere. Nothing is coincidental. Others are taking special notice of them, maybe. They think that people like them. Oh God, I went somewhere and all these men were asking me out all the time. Oh God, can't stand it. They just all want my body. They just all want sex. <laughs> Or they see reference to themselves in innocuous behavior and irrelevant events. Someone on YouTube, I think they like me. I've commented before and I, th I think they're referring to me in, the, in one of their videos. Are you, are you talking about me? I've literally had that. I'm like, sorry, what? I think you're talking about me. Don't know you. Um, constantly on guard, searching for hidden motives and meanings. It involves feeling threatened persecuted, conspired against during periods of extreme stress. Now, the most common paranoia I've seen during psychosis is about my physical safety, right? Um, someone's out to get me, they're out to kill me, people are following me, the Russians are coming, yeah. 
But people with borderline, people with this disorder, distinctly, it's about abandonment. So you're cheating on me. You're betraying me. You like someone else. You're more attracted to them. Oh, you don't like me anymore. You're mad at me. You're angry at me. You're leaving me. That's what it's really about. You're abandoning me. Whether it's a special raise, a job you got, an opportunity, or you don't like me, you're not attracted to me anymore. Um, somebody else is getting some more attention than me. All of it. And I know people like you guys who've had people with this disorder in your life, especially romantic partners, you, you know what that is like. It involves feeling threatened, persecuted, conspired against. I already said this. Borderline cheating, betrayal, slighted, abused, leaving, ending relationship. Okay, so the or, the or, the paranoid ideation is one extreme reaction to extreme stress. The other extreme reaction to extreme stress is severe dissociating, severe dissociative symptoms. So it could be one or the other to have this trait. A dissociative reaction to stress typically began in childhood. Many people with this disorder very commonly have been you know, S-A'd, assaulted sexually. Can't say it. Um, dissociating is a sef safety mechanism. For those of you who don't know, you're okay, you're safe. It's not a horrible, bad thing that you're dissociating. The problem is, is coming off our, our nervous system offline and detaching ourselves from our feelings. That's, that's who we are. So it causes a real separation from ourselves real severe lacking uh, a sense of self, uh, who we are, self-awareness. Um, now, dissociating can be as subtle as daydreaming to as extreme as dissociative identity disorder, having different personalities. But this is extreme. This is severe dissociative symptoms. Um, and it, it, it kind of depends on having like a dissociative disorder it will depend on the amount that you're doing it every day. But the more you're doing, the further away from yourself you're becoming. Um, dissociative symptoms, experiencing a loss of connection between thoughts, memories, feelings, surroundings, behaviors, and identity. Very common, isn't it? Um, you know, I can't remember what happened or my memory is skewed. It's different than how it actually happened. Um, you know, I could be dissociating. Dissociating could be as subtle as this. <clears throat> you're talking about something serious and I may perceive that what you're saying means that you're leaving me. And so I may just kind of allow a little bit. I could be dissociating right now. You wouldn't know. But I may get a little bit of this, this my voice, just a little kind of, and I may say, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I love you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care if you do that. It's not really matching, is it? I love you. Yeah, I'm happy. You know, not really working there, is it? Um, and, and someone with this disorder could be doing it a lot. Most of the day. Sad. Escaping reality in unhealthy ways. Taking behaviors like that. Um, <clears throat> the world seems unreal or time slows down or speeds up. This could last hours, days, weeks, and months. Someone could depersonalize, derealize, or have total amnesia, not remember anything. And sometimes they'll pretend that they don't remember anything. Uh, a real lack of self-awareness, a real lack of sense of self of who they are, and this can be extreme all the way to taking one's own life. This can be helped with talk therapy. Anybody experiencing this or somebody you know is experiencing this needs talk therapy. I would start with DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. Um, anybody in a relationship with someone like this, I would contact professional help. Not just for them, but for you. This is not something that we fix during um, couples counseling. This is more of a personal problem. You know, a relationship with someone like this can be extremely difficult and stressful. Very much. I strongly recommend getting help. If you're not sure what to do, you can't fix this problem in your relationship. It's causing you stress. Step outside of the relationship. 
ask for help, tell someone, okay? Anybody who finds this video beneficial, could you please consider subscribing, thumbs up, comment down below, share it, stuff like this. Um, I have, I post stuff almost every day if you want to see when more things come out. Um, please ask questions. Please share your own personal experiences you feel comfortable doing, that you feel comfortable sharing, because it really helps other people watching. Thank you. Love yourself first, guys. Bye-bye.